Hi folks, welcome to another episode of the Holy Irregular ECY Shedcast. It's been quite a long time since the last one. Uh, no particular reason, just other than being really busy with other stuff um, and just kind of not really in the headspace somehow. Um, I don't know, for, for recording videos, I've really got to be in, in the zone. Um, I've had to sort of force myself to come out here and do this now. Um, and it's not that I don't even enjoy it, it's just like, I'm just always doing other things and kind of cracking on um, and actually having to pause and get myself organised and think about what, what I need to say and all that kind of thing just tends to fall by the wayside. Um, so today I'm in our stock room. I've never filmed in here before because it's it's quite trampy really. It's just a concrete garage. Um, it's, it's a lovely big space to be fair but as you can see it's really not very glamorous. I'm not sure how we'll get on with the lighting. I've got strip lights um, and certainly on the camera they, they change the colours quite a bit. I'm just looking at this shawl, um, hoping it looks about right on screen. I think I think it's okay, it might just be a bit yellowy, but then you get that with all artificial light anyway, don't you? Um, and it's bright sunshine outside so, and it's quite noisy, so that's no use. Anyway, let's crack on. I hope you're all all right. Um, like I say, I know it's been a long time. Um, so, yeah, we're just coming, you know, in case you're watching this like several years in the future. Right now, um, we are gradually coming out of another lockdown um, after the COVID pandemic. Well, it is very much still happening, to, to be honest, but... Um, Non, at this point, non-essential shops have reopened, um, but I must admit, I haven't really felt tempted to, to go in any just yet. <laughs> I've not even had, had my first jab yet, so I'm, I'm quite I'm just quite happy staying at home in my little bubble, to be honest. Um, we've seen our like small core group of friends, um, and they're kind of all the same. We're just happy to keep it low-key for now. Um, so yeah, I hope you're all keeping safe and uh, still being creative. It really helps to keep you going, doesn't it? Um, we've, I mean, since my last episode, we've we've had absolutely loads of stuff on, which I really should have come on and told you about, but never mind. And I'm not going to bang on about it all now. Um, I'm going to talk about what's coming next. Um, pardon me, sorry, I've just eaten my lunch which is actually really late. <laughs> um, so today is Thursday. <laughs> Had to think about that. So on Sunday, we have our next update, which is Ask em Aaron, which is Baby Alpaca and Silk. So that's what's coming properly next. Um, and because I'm in the stock room, I can actually go and get some, if you give me one sec. And you can look at that beautiful wall whilst you wait for me. Hopefully you can still hear me. I'm just digging around in boxes. Oh, got loads of stuff in here at the moment. Let's grab a couple of colours of this to show you. Should have thought of that beforehand, shouldn't I? So, oh, here we are. Ask them Aaron. There you go. Beautiful baby alpaca and silk. I love this yarn. And again, if I was more organised, I would have today been wearing the jumper that I made in this. Um, it's a jumper that I have shown on social media a lot. Um, this is Rambler, uh, Hydrangea even, sorry. So that's just three of the colours that I've done. I've done lots of neutrals actually this time. And sometimes I think, oh God, well, people think that it's a bit of a cop out, but they just work so well on this yarn. Uh, let me just make sure that that's focused. Camera's focused correctly. I'm not sure whether it is or not. Anyway, hopefully you can see that adequately. You can really see that fluff. 
and how screw it's so squishy um but yeah I, i've got quite a lot of things made in it but particularly this jumper that i like i say i show it on social media a lot and it's um a sort of dark warm gray um it's got raglan sleeves and it's got a cowl neck it's called wood wardia um it's from pom pom magazine from a couple of years ago and i wear that jumper absolutely loads so this yarn on the needles it feels it feels heavy and you kind of knit in it and you're going oh god this is going to be so you know heavy um but actually once once you're wearing it you just can't feel it um you don't feel like you're wearing a big heavy garment you just you're not at all and it's so warm and cozy and it's lightweight to wear it is just it's so so gorgeous it's one of those yarns that where my photos probably don't show it off to its best and you need you really need to use it and wear it to to appreciate it because once you have done you're just like oh this yarn is just to die for so anyway that's ask Aaron, baby alpaca and silk and that's coming on sunday um we've gone for sunday morning this time it's always difficult with the timing of updates because we sort of especially on a weekend we're trying to time it so that you know if people are out and doing lots of activities during the day we want the updates to be either side of that but then also not too early in the morning not too late at night and then we have international customers as well who we try to accommodate so it's very tricky to choose um the timing for updates and then i'm sure we probably never really get it right but anyway there we go sunday morning um is that one i think we said 10 o'clock in the end uh after much consideration and then the next thing uh, coming after that which is what i really wanted to tell you about and i really wanted to do a video about it is a new yarn that we've got coming called titus fingering uh so obviously it's a fingering four ply four ply weight uh, thickness it's the same blend as Titus 4 ply. So it's, let me just check, I'm not on to make sure I get this right. 75% superwash merino and 25% silk, which is the same as Titus 4 ply. Um, but it's spun as a singles yarn and I've got them both here. In fact, I'll pick out the same colors. And I've got them both here so that you can see the difference. So, this is Titus 4 ply, okay, which I've been doing for about 10 years now. That's quite a scary thought, isn't it? And then this is the Titus fingering. So, you can see it's the same fibre content, but it's spun as a singles yarn. Um, there you go. Again, I hope the camera's focusing on that adequately. It's so shiny. Uh, because it's a singles yarn, you really get the shine on it. Um, so, <laughs> I'm just conscious that my next door neighbour is out in this garden next door and can probably hear me and thinks I'm talking to myself and it's quite embarrassing. Anyway, um, yep, I can, I can hear next door. Ah oh dear, the joys of social media and running a business from home. <laughs> um, right, where was I? Titus, I'll, I'll try and keep my voice down and then he can't hear me so much. Titus fingering. Um, and by the way, <laughs> I discovered this week that Instagram apparently um, reduces the visibility on posts that talk about fingering weight yarns because they think it's rude. So, um, yeah, that's fun. Um, but I, I, I can't call it a four ply yarn because it just simply is not a four ply. It's not, it's not even plied like at all. So I, I can't bring myself to name it so incorrectly. Um, so we shall stick with uh, calling it fingering weight. I'm, I'm sure that violin players will have the same problem on Instagram. Anyway, so obviously I've, I've knitted and crocheted it up, you know, because 
how can we advise people on the yarn and how it behaves unless we've tested it which sounds wonderful it sounds like a great job but to be honest doing all these swatches is it's sort of it's great but it's also really boring because they're not wearable and um when i'm making things i'm all about the finished object and like just enjoying wearing it or using it so it, it, it is really it's really useful and informative and kind of like oh um making the swatches but <laughs> yeah it, it's one of those jobs anyway um i'll start with the knitted ones so this is it on two and a half millimeter needles okay and um what we've got here is a really nice firm fabric it's obviously got some drape um i really like the way that this color is, is knitted up actually the way it's sort of distributed is i actually think it's just gorgeous here it is in a skein i've not actually picked the neatest skein there um but that's it in the skein compared to how it knits up so you get that gorgeous really really subtle mild effect Um, so that's the two and a half millimetre needles. So I really like that fabric. I mean, I, w I wouldn't knit a jumper on two and a half millimetre needles, to be fair. But this fabric is just, oh, it's just lovely. Um, so that's that one. So it's, it is knitting up similar to a standard four ply, really. I'd say maybe it probably feels slightly thinner um and i think probably a lot of people when they see it will go it's not really four ply it's a bit thinner it is spun as a four ply thickness um it's just that because it's so lustrous and because there isn't air making it fluff out it's very silky so it looks it looks finer than a four ply but it, it fluffs out a bit actually when you wash and block it so this is a three and a half millimeter needle this is this is actually usually my go-to size for um, knitting and crochet actually for four ply and fingering weight um, you can see it's still quite a close fabric but it's just got that bit more lightness to it and also three and a half millimetre needles well they're just that much quicker aren't they to work on um, so I really like that so for this I think by default I would probably stick with my usual three and a half millimetre needles or hook. Um, I think maybe three millimetre if I wanted a slightly closer fabric. But yeah, certainly for shawls and, and sort of drapey things like that, I'd go that a little bit bigger. And then I've also tried a four and a half millimetre needle. Now this doesn't really do it for me i have to be honest um it's just that bit too open i, I don't really like it when the stitches are, are that gappy it probably doesn't look as bad on on the screen as it does in re like to me in real life um you, you can see quite nicely how the stitches are fluffed out so that compared to what's going on? to when you see it in the skein it's sort of it has fluffed out. Um, so that's the four and a half anyway. But I mean, you know, for like something really lacy, that would work pretty, pretty, pretty well, wouldn't it? Um, so that's that one. Um, I don't have the numbers for you, but we will put together a blog post and I will list um, how many stitches and rows I've got for each of these swatches and what size needles I used. Obviously it's gonna be different for everybody, but if I if I tell you what I've done, then hopefully it gives you a starting point um, as to, you know, what you might get or similar to what you might get in terms of tension with this yarn. Um, the crochet, this is actually my favorite swatch. This is it crocheted that's um, rows and rows of trebles. Trebles? Yeah, UK trebles. 
um, on a two and a half millimeter hook. And like I say, that's my favorite swatch. It's just so, it's so neat and, and perfect. And, and I love the way that the rows just all kind of stack up really neatly. I absolutely love this. Um, so that's a two and a half millimeter hook. Again, not something that I would naturally turn to for making like a garment or something, but <sighs> it is tempting. Now that I've done this, it's tempting. Um, so then the next one is a three and a half millimeter hook. So again, like I was saying about the three and a half millimeter needles for the knitted one, this would be my go-to size for four ply or fingering weight yarn. Um, it's it's that bit more open and faster to, to do, uh, but it's still quite neat and quite close. It's not too gappy. Uh, hopefully you can see that nicely. It's quite a small swatch that I think I must have been getting impatient when I was uh, making it. And then this is the four and a half millimeter hook, which actually doesn't look a whole lot bigger than the three and a half. But I think it's because I blocked it really, really gently. Um, I didn't like I didn't stretch it, but I I, pr I really could have done. <sighs> So that's a four and a half. The, the thing about this, now this again would work really well for lace, but the thing about this is that if I block, if I'd blocked it all nice and open like that, like it, I think I could have done, to me, that just looks like a fishing net or like a cotton shopping bag kind of thing in a bad way, if I'm honest. So that's quite off-putting for me. Um, it's, it's, it's only because it's the pattern that it is. You know, if it was like a proper lace pattern or something like that, then yeah, it would work perfectly well. But that's not really doing it for me. So my, I just pulled my favourites back out. My, my, um, yeah, my favourites are the two and a half millimetre hook and the three and a half millimetre needles. So, like I say, I shall pop them up on the blog with um, lists of all the numbers so that there's lots of information. So I think this yarn will substitute in for, for in terms of patterns, for for most uh, four ply and fingering weight um, yarn requirements for the, for the patterns, um, you like I say, some people will undoubtedly say it's not a four ply or it's it, it's a bit thin, but it is. It's just it's very fine because of the silk content, really. Um, so you know if you think. If you kind of think that you might feel like that, then I would go for one of the slightly thicker ones. Um, but if you like quite fine and silky, soft um, yarn, then oh, this is going to be good. I'm also knitting a hat in it. I've made a pair of fingerless mittens, but I've actually left them in the house, which is quite quite a big mistake, isn't it? <laughs> I, knew I, I knew I was missing something. And I've knitted those on two and a half millimetre needles. Um, we'll put a picture in the blog post anyway. So they're on two and a half millimetre needles and you've got that really lovely, firm, fitted fabric that I like for fingerless mittens. I don't like them baggy. Um, so it's worked really well for, you know, quite a nice, tight, cosy fabric. And then for these, these, this. Oh, no, I don't want you, Siri, thanks. Uh, I never ever ever use Siri. I only ever use it to switch it off. Um, this I'm going for a much more drapey fabric with the lace. If you can hear voices it's somebody walking past our garden. Um, so this is going to be a hat. In fact if I take my sunglasses off because it's really bright out there today I can probably show you 
so glamorous, eh? Um, there we go. So I'm on the crown decreases for this now. Um, so I've used 2.75 millimetre needles for the brim um, to try and keep it nice and stretchy and a bit, a bit clingy because obviously this is going to block out. Um, and then I'm on three millimetre needles for the lace um which is obviously much looser and much more open but that's how you want it isn't it for lace um so it's a beanie but it, it'll have a touch of slouch at the back i think um so yeah I, I can certainly say that it knits up really nicely into something like fingerless mittens and it's knitting up beautifully into this lace hat which by the way is a pattern that we will be producing <laughs> let's say um fairly soon in fact i really could do to get it typed up this afternoon and then we can put it out for test knitting um so yeah so that's where we're at i i mean i love this yarn i wouldn't have it if i didn't um so, yeah what more can i say other than it's just gorgeous shall i show you some colors that's probably helpful isn't it so you've seen uh yes that is the right yarn rambling rose so let's see what other pink I did. I did Meadow Rue as well. I say pink, it's a lilac -y pink. Well, it actually looks quite purpley in this light, doesn't it? But it's quite pinky when you see it outside. It's like a greyish lilac -y pink. You can see the difference there. That's a pinky pink. Um, so that's those two. Just digging around in the boxes. Oh, that's tight as fall fly. Um, this one, there we go, is Starling, Starling, as in the bird. Um, so this is char a charcoal base and it's got kind of dapples of like gold and rust and um, sort of similar colours. Um, so that's that one. And then... So you've seen this one. This one is Sea Spray, which is that gorgeous light turquoise. And then Coppice, which is a bit of an ECY classic, to be honest. It's got a little bit greener recently because uh, this is something I've mentioned before. Um, one of my dyes has randomly changed again and it's affected a huge number of my pa uh, recipes. Um, so this has got a little bit greener and it's not green dye that changed because I don't use green dye I, mi I mix it fresh <laughs> anyway um, we have falling leaves which is sort of gold light creamy gold and then to go with that or not whichever idea that you want uh, we have rust I, th I just thought actually that this would look amazing with the shine and it does it totally does i really hope you can see that properly because it look it just is amazing um i did tide again same reason as the rust i thought it would look amazing with the shine but also it goes well with the sea spray which i'll show you in a minute and then a couple more neutrals a proper neutral steel which is uh obviously light grey it's quite silvery especially on this yarn oh so gorgeous um and then my new favorite neutral which i i sort of designed for myself because i wanted a neutral that had a little bit of something else going on so this is granite it has featured in i think one previous update so far this isn't quite its debut. So obviously, as you can see, it's a, a nice sort of steely grey, but darker than steel, with black dapples in it. Just for a little bit of something, but nothing too there. I mean, I'm all for popping colours, definitely. Um, 
you know, and, and multicolours and stuff like that. But sometimes you actually just want, well, in fact, as you can see, I've got a bit of a thing about mild grey in particular. I've had this t-shirt for many years. Um, I have lots of mild grey things in my wardrobe. So I'll do a few colour combinations. Again, the, there are more of these. I was going to say on the blog, but actually they're on Flickr. We have Flickr albums showing colour combinations for all the yarns we ever do. And you can ha you can look at two colours, three colours, four colours, five, six, seven, eight, I think nine. Um, so do have a look at those. But I'll do some because, I mean, this is why we're here really, isn't it? Just to look at yarn. Uh, Starling, granite and steel. All the grey. But you could add in like just a pop of colour. So like you could add in tide or rust. That looks really cool. That's so cool. I like that. Um, you could do falling leaves. You could do falling leaves and rust maybe. You could add tide to that for a real pop, contrasty pop. You can see that there, can't you, I think. Um, so yeah, there's lots to go on there. And then, so we've got, I mean, pink and green, absolute classic. Or you could go for the meadow rue with the green. Um, or what about meadow rue with steel or meadow rue, steel and granite? Oh, yes. Yeah, I like that. Um, what else have we got? Again, you could add in Tide to that. And then that leads me on to Tide and Sea Spray. Or what about Tide, Sea Spray and Steel? Is that working? Yeah. Mm. Tide, Sea Spray and Granite. Yeah, I like that. I think I prefer that to the steel, possibly. Uh, does it work with? Mm. See, I like those two together. That's tied and falling leaves, but I don't like the falling leaves with sea spray. Let's try rust. Nah, not with the sea spray. Those two. Oh yes. Uh, I've gone in a circle now, haven't I? Those three. Um, what else? We can always do green and grey. That's always good. Or green and uh, the dark grey obviously works. Um, I think I've covered all the basics there, actually. Hmm. I was thinking styling with coppice. Because although it's got sort of rusty goldy dapples they're not so in your face that they clash with the coppice um i think that just about covers it to be honest so yeah that's um this lot's coming on i hope i get this right friday the 30th of april at 7 p.m uh it's probably worth double checking the blurb underneath this video description uh just in case i've got that wrong but I, i'm sure we said we, we discussed it like a matter of hours ago <laughs> um so yeah titus fingering it's dead exciting actually y you know we, we don't release brand new yarns all that often because obviously we've already got so many um but when we you know, when we see something that we really, really like, or, well, I really like, it's just like, yeah, this is happening. Um, so it is exciting. Um, and yeah, to have something to join the kind of Titus family, because we've got Titus Lace, Titus Four Ply, Titus Double Knit, and now Titus Fingering. To be honest, the Titus Double Knit has never sell, uh, sold very well, um, but we are, we are going to continue with it it's just that we can't currently get hold of it anyway um thanks to brexit so once that's back in stock we will we will give it another go 
Um, but yeah, the, the four ply and the lace are really, really popular, even after 10 years, which is incredible. Um, so <laughs> I'm just wondering whether I dare show you the rest of the garage because it's just so like, what's the word? Not practical, but just kind of uh, not glamorous. <laughs> um, go on, because if I don't, you're just gonna you're just gonna like ask me, aren't you? So, right, please excuse the mess <laughs> as well. Um, it, it it's a constant battle to keep it tidy, to be honest, because the stock fluctuates so much that I I'm constantly kind of like. Um, combining boxes and and all that kind of thing and of course because it's well even not even that but basically because it's semi outdoors although i probably do it indoors as well um i keep all the yarn in plastic boxes so that it's obviously it's as moth proof as possible and as damp proof as possible and all that kind of thing and as spider proof as possible so it really doesn't look very attractive but I'm going to show you anyway because it is the reality of what we do. Um, so, and you can get an idea of just how much yarn we've got because I'm not sure it's all that obvious on the website. Um, I'm just moving the camera away to try and show you. So, there we go. That's the full height of the shelving. And then all of these bedding bags have got uh, skeins of yarn in that are waiting for photography for updates so this side is all hand dyed um and i did when we moved in four years ago i did start painting you can just see uh, where's my finger there it is Woo! that was quite hard to do actually there you can see a bit of yellow wall where I started painting the wall yellow and then got bored of it <laughs> and then had to fill fill the place with stock anyway and I've never painted the rest of it. One day I might get around to painting the rest of it of the walls yellow just to cheer it up. So there's a couple of boxes outside waiting to be broken down um, and then all of this side so that's all cardboard boxes that I've broken down from deliveries and obviously we, we use as many as we can um, and the rest go for recycling. So then on this side, it's all Milburn, Milburn double knit at the far end, Milburn four ply towards me and then Whitfell chunky in these top boxes. And then here, just in case you've spotted it, is the last remaining Milburn four ply in moss. There are 16 balls left. Um, we've discontinued that colour so that we can replace it with something else. Basically, as you can see, I only have a very finite amount of space um, here. So I can only realistically manage 20 colours each of uh, Milburn four ply and double knit. So um, that's why if we want to bring in a new colour, we really need to discontinue one of the others. So we just pick the least popular really. And and then I kind of go, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, I love them all. Um, and we sort of mull it over for a while and then decide. So that's why Milburn four ply and moss is discontinued. Just pick these skeins up. So that is my absolutely hideous workspace in terms of the stock room um the dye shed is much nicer it has to be said um but it's very hot in there right now because it's so sunny which is is lovely but it's a bit sweaty um and there's a lot less space a, a really a lot less space so this is a nice big space uh the floor i must admit the floor drives me crackers it's just really not very nice and then um, i'd really like to do something about that this summer as well so yeah that's that's my space 
and I, to be honest I just have to tolerate it because I, I really cannot afford to replace it um it's got an asbestos roof if nothing else and just the cost of removing it or the risk to us of removing it isn't is it we have to keep it going for as long as we possibly can um and it's such a lovely big space to be honest if i can keep it going i really will do um so yeah and and it doesn't look very organized but it is like i, I know where everything is it's super super organized um to me <laughs> probably not to anyone else so anyway that's that's where we're at other updates that we've got coming up are Askham Lace and Askham Four Ply, so that's the Baby Alpaca and Silk again. Titus Lace, which I mentioned earlier, which is the Superwash Merino and Silk. Um, it's just all so soft and lovely. Um, what else? Tempo Four Ply, that's our proper sock yarn. I've got a big, uh, a big pile of that coming soon. And actually, today I am dyeing Keld Fingering, which is the Merino Linen um it's super popular which i'm delighted about because it's it's just amazing i love it i can't get enough of it and dyeing it is just such a pleasure i've got a huge update of that in progress so that's that's going to be really exciting because it's, it's rare these days that we do massive massive updates um it's just it's quite a big financial risk for me really that's all um and I think because I've got staff now and I have to make sure that I can always pay them, taking bigger financial risks feels more risky now than it probably would have done. You know, when it was just me, it didn't matter. Um, but when you've got people to look after, you, you have to make sure that you're going to be able to look after them. So um, I tend to be a lot more cautious about massive updates for that reason. Um, but yeah, so that's Keld fingering. Oh, I have a dog. Hello, Pookie. So I'll just see if I can turn the camera. Hey, darling. Oh, she's, oh. No, she disappeared. There we go. Luna. Hey. Hey, darling. What are you doing? Hey. Dog stuff. <laughs> My little helper. Uh, so, on that note, loads of good stuff coming up. Um, the other thing is the super secret spring stash boxes are being packed this week um, so they're due to ship there are still some left so if you missed out on pre-ordering you can still order um, so they'll ship next week so that's really good um, we've got patterns going on we have my Rokeby hat pattern um that's coming towards the end of its test knit that's the hound's tooth um color work hat uh, i've done the cowl and fingerless mittens as well so you might have seen that pattern before and then the other one is this which is also coming to the end excuse me of its test knit um this is my riverside walks shawl it's done in lowther lace which is our fluffy baby alpaca with a set of well i used sparkly minis five of them because uh, there's a, another one there in a fade let me get darker and um, this thing is enormous it's it must be about a good eight feet long there we go it looks so simple doesn't it but this pattern oh it's just yes. been so much work on the production and the, to be honest, the test knitters have been absolutely amazing. They've been so patient about it. Um, but it's just that whole thing of having... I work by lace charts, so I had it all charted. Um, but then turning that into a, like a professional and legible format and then matching it up with the written lace instructions as well. It's just, oh, it's just so much work you know what i don't think i don't think sales of this pattern will ever make it pay for itself um i'm banking on yarn sales for the pattern to be honest um to hopefully make it approaching pay for itself but 
the, when I think about the number of hours that I've put in and then Laura's put in with the tech editing and all that kind of thing, it's just vast. It's honestly, it's vast. And this is just for what I thought was going to be a simple shawl. Um, so I might write about that at some point because it really is eye opening. Even, you know, I've been doing this for, for a very long time. Well, it feels like a very long time now. And um, it's not that I've not done complicated patterns before, but there was something about about the way that the lace fits into the shape of the shawl. It, it's an irregular shape. Um, it's just been an astounding amount of work, but I wear this shawl loads and I, I really think that it'll be worth it. Um, the testers that have knitted it or just finishing it absolutely love it and they're all asking for more. So I must have done something right, hopefully. Um, so yeah, the, and then the next things that will need testing are this hat and um, the fingerless mittens to match. So if you are interested, look out for that. The only thing is you need to be on a Facebook because we're using a private Facebook group to run the test knit and it's, that's working really, really nicely. So um, anyway, look out for that. That's that's not just yet. The immediate future is Ask a Marin. So, oh God, that yarn is so snuggly. And um, Titus Fingering.